Hi, I'm Callie and welcome to Kapowski Reads and this is my Reading Scottish wrap up for August. And this has been a weird month because I am not 100% sure how many books I read for Reading Scottish, which sounds very strange, I know, but it will make sense when I go through my books. I have read perhaps three or four. I think three Goodreads says four, but I disagree. I also had one DNF. I'm trying to get better at giving up on books that I'm just really not enjoying. And if I don't feel like it's gonna get to a stage that I'm gonna start enjoying it, then I need to just stop and move on to something that brings joy because I've read far too many books just out of stubbornness and the hope that it's going to get better and they rarely do. So I'm very proud of myself for that actually. <laughs> Let's start with my DNF and I'm going to work my way up from there. I DNF'd Meet Me at the Cupcake Cafe by Jenny Colgan. This is my third book by this author and I am now very confident in saying that this is not a genre that I enjoy reading. I made it to about 200 pages through the book and it's quite a big book. It is over 400 pages and I just thought I, I wasn't enjoying it. I didn't enjoy any of the characters. I didn't enjoy a lot of the plot and it just felt really dated despite, I mean, the book, the book is over 10 years old, but it felt more like it was written in the 90s. So I, yeah, not for me. I gave up. I'm going to drop it off at the charity shop and somebody else can get it and enjoy it. I then, I read one book. I'm calling it one book, but Goodreads will argue that it is two, but they're lying. So <laughs> I read Starbeth by David Keenan. But this is why Goodreads think it's two books, because it's another book on the other side, which is The Towers, The Fields, The Transmitters. It's by David Keenan. And you, yeah, so it's really short and 80 pages are one book and 160, I think, are the other. So quite small. I argue it's one book because it is one physical book, but it doesn't exist on Goodreads as one physical book. So it's logged as two, which makes me feel like a liar. And this is one of those books that, you know, when you read a book and you just think, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> this is one of those books. And it kind of, while I was reading it, it really made me think of Master and Margarita, which is one of my favourite classics. But that book is just madness. And this book was madness. But I don't know if I enjoyed it. And I don't know if I disliked it. I don't think I disliked it. I kept reading it. And I wanted to keep reading it, so I think I liked it, but I don't know. I haven't actually rated it on Goodreads because I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so Stabeth, and I did look it up on YouTube to hear the author talk about the book, and that's how he pronounced it, so I'm going with that. I was calling it Christabeth because I just thought of uh, Christina Aguilera when she was ex-Tina, and I I went with that but I was wrong. Uh, this book is all about Analia who is a young woman in Russia living with her father and she is having a love affair with her father's best friend who is a musician just like her father but he's slightly more famous and I really enjoyed that he kept being referred to as the more famous musician. That made me chuckle quite a bit and the father writes a song and from that song a spirit angelic force called Stabeth appears and the book just gets odder and stranger from there. The father and daughter then find themselves in St Andrews with a successful golf pro and he embarks on a love affair with the daughter. He has many many kinks that are described in this book and <laughs> I don't know I don't really know how I felt reading this. It was surprisingly smutty, which was unexpected, 
and I say it was unexpected because I didn't really have that many expectations. All I knew was that this book was going to be odd and I like odd but I don't know if this was maybe too odd. I'm not 100% sure what even happened in this book. Things happened but did they happen? It was so strange. The second book, uh, the the Towers, the Fields, the Transmitters, is described as being a sequel slash prequel and I don't know how that works. I don't know how you can have a prequel or a sequel because prequel is before and sequel is after. So uh, what? I had no idea, absolutely no concept of what time either of these books took place in. So it was quite disorienting to read and I did not I know I did not really enjoy the second book. It was very gratuitous and none of it really sounded pleasurable and I didn't really like any of the characters. Not that that's really important I suppose but it was strange and it was hard to follow and I don't know, I don't know how much of it is the book is just wildness or how much of it is, you know, I am struggling sometimes to concentrate because I had got COVID twice in a very short amount of time. So it could be me. I could be the reason I've got no idea what's going on in these books. But I don't think that that is it. I think it might be the books. Who knows? I am going to just chalk this book up to a book that needs a second read before it makes sense. I had other books like that before, so it's not unusual to find that I maybe need a second read before I have a solid opinion. I just know I don't think I liked the second book. And the author seems to really enjoy butts. <laughs> the next book I read was Bury Your Secrets by M.R. Mackenzie. And this book was about three friends who go off on a holiday where they meet a man who ends up dead. And they end up burying the body and just living with that secret. And it kind of starts to tear them apart. And this book was just one bad decision after another. First of all, the man who ends up dead was a walking red flag. I don't think you should have even taken him to your little bothy that you were staying in. That was a bad decision. And then he ended up dead. So bad decisions all around and it just absolutely escalated which in literature I find very enjoyable to read. I really like when the characters make bad decisions and things grow arms and legs and I can't stop staring at my giant chin spot so oh let's ignore it and maybe it'll go away. So I loved, I loved just the terrible, terrible life choices and the repercussions and just the absolute escalating events. I didn't like any of the characters, but they felt realistic. They were very well-rounded as characters, just not people that I would ever choose to be friends with. And not just because they did a murder and covered it up. The book felt completely unpredictable. I found myself trying to guess what was going to happen and I was completely wrong on all accounts and there were loads of red herrings so I kept thinking the book was going one way and it, it just did not. So it was a really exciting and quite thrilling read. It was very psychological as well which is horrible in real life but in fiction it's really enjoyable seeing how the characters sort of manipulate each other and trying to work out when they're going to realise that they're being manipulated and feeling a bit smug that you've noticed that they're being manipulated. It was a really quick paced book, really easy to read. I finished it pretty quickly and yeah, it was a great fun. Great fun. You can't say great fun about reading a book with murder or maybe you can. There were some moments that I just felt were completely unrealistic and I'm kind of sticking with that. So it was a really enjoyable and thrilling, kind of chilling read but there were some moments that I just felt were a little bit unrealistic and I just didn't see I just didn't see that happening in in real life. I did suspect there was going to be something about Aiden's sister because she felt 
she felt really odd. I mean, Aiden was really odd and creepy, the murder victim, and I felt like his sister was the same. So I kind of thought the book was going somewhere there, but it didn't. Which kind of made me a bit sad because I built an entire narrative about Aiden's family and, and none of that came out. Next thing I read was Glow Glass by Kirkland Ciccone, who I think would approve that this came from the library, which is why it's in his little plastic jacket. This book is all about Starsha, who was part of a cult. And one morning at breakfast, everybody's tucking into their porridge and they die. And Starsha survives. Starsha and her mute brother are the only people left standing after that breakfast. And the book is just about Starsha then having to navigate through life. She's a teenager, so she has to go to school. And, and people are not overly kind or welcoming to a young woman who has been in a cult and lost almost all of her family. So it was kind of part family saga, part high school drama, and a whole part of just oddness, which is what I want from a book. I want oddness, but I want to understand the oddness. And at the sort of compound where the cult was and Starsha still lives, videotapes start arriving and they are from the cult leader who's basically giving them instructions to almost cause the cult to self-destruct. It's very clear that he thought that he would be the only one to pass away. So he's leaving these messages to the congregation, which is only just two people. And he is basically causing chaos from beyond the grave. He's left money and money makes people make bad decisions. And he's trying to leave clues as to where the money is. And family members start coming out of the woodwork and trying to find the money. And they are just as unpleasant as the cult leader was. And they were horrible to read about. But the author writes really good, bad characters. So they were horrible, but they got their comeuppance. So I was okay reading about horrible people because I knew that they weren't going to get away with that. I really like Starsha and just her utter honesty, which did not go down well in high school, but made her a really sort of endearing character. I loved the amount of My Chemical Romance references in this book because I was a huge fan of them as a teenager and as a now 36 year old, I still am. So I thought there was the right amount of Gerard Way love in this book, which very much pleased my little emo heart. The format of this book was so surprising because I, I ordered this book from the library ages ago and kind of forgot. So when it arrived, I kind of didn't really remember what I was expecting. And the entire book is a transcript of a video recording. So that was unexpected, an unexpected treat. And the entire book takes place over a three hour long VHS recording of Starsha talking about what happened to her family, her trying to navigate high school, her trying to live in the compound with this revolving door of family members showing up, trying to find the money, her just trying to live. And I really, really loved it. I was kept on my toes throughout this book. It was such a quick and an exciting read. And I just, I didn't, I didn't see most things coming. I was surprised a lot during this book. The chapters were really short, which is something that I very much appreciated because at the time of reading this, I really was struggling to read longer chapters. I think the longest chapter was maybe five pages because every chapter is a single recording on that video. So she basically records a moment and stops it and that is one chapter and then she records again and that's the other chapter. I thought that was brilliant. I think this is the second book that I've read this month that is a sort of transcript and that is such such an interesting way of formatting a book and it just makes it flow really well. So I love that and I just I loved everything I write this book. It just gave me such a sort of whirlwind of emotions. And I love, love, loved her best friend, Dan, who I think I would have been friends with Dan in high school. 
I think I was friends with somebody like that. They just felt like such real characters, if that makes sense. And yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I hated, absolutely hated Aunt Imelda and Uncle Ezra, hated them, but I knew, I knew they were gonna get their comeuppance. So I was okay reading about them because I knew that they weren't gonna succeed. <laughs> yeah, I guessed nothing. This was an absolute wild ride of a book. So thoroughly enjoyed it. And I will be looking up more books by this author because this is the second time I have read a book by them. And the second time I've had no idea what was happening, but enjoyed the entire journey. So I think it's safe to say that I know I'm in for a good time with Kirkland. So very happy to have read this. And my Asta delivery has just arrived. So I am gonna sign off because I need to go and get my food. Um, thank you for watching. Bye.